Graduates, please be seated. Graduates, honored guests, faculty, staff, family, and friends, welcome to the 2018 graduation ceremony at the Stanford University Graduate School of Business. I'd like to begin by recognizing the people around us who have played a pivotal role in the experience of our graduates. The faculty that sit behind me have led our students on a transformative journey. Could I ask the faculty to stand for a moment of thanks? Around the pavilion are staff from the MBA, the MSX, and the PhD programs whose dedication and effort have helped make the journey meaningful and enjoyable. I ask that our staff stand and be recognized. For many of you who are graduating, your GSB education has been a team effort. Your families and friends have been there to listen, to support you, and to advise you. Let's take a moment to recognize our families and friends. <laughs> now I would like to say a few words to you. Our 2018 GSB graduates. Earlier this year, I read a, a biography of an American author, Laura Ingalls Wilder. Now, Laura Ingalls Wilder grew up on the American frontier in the 19th century, and she went on to write many books about her experience as a child on the frontier, including Little House on the Prairie and, uh, and, and a number of others in that series. And some of you may have read those books. I read them as children, and then I read them to my own children, several times, in fact. And she lived a very remarkable life. But what struck me in reading her biography was the way that the world changed during her lifetime. In 1880, at the age of 12, Laura Ingalls spent a winter in Dakota Territory. Her father worked for the railroad company. The nearest neighbor was 37 miles away, unreachable in winter snows. There was no telegraph, no telephone, no postal service, no radio, no means of communication. Her family was completely isolated. She recounted that winter 50 years later when she became a writer. This was in the 1930s. By the time she wrote about that winter, there was electricity, there was indoor plumbing, there was long distance communication. She drove with her daughter from Missouri to California. And eventually she flew on an airplane to New York. Between the winter that she spent in Dakota Territory and her death in 1957, standards of living in the United States more than doubled twice. Those changes in a single human life are extraordinary, and they have continued. A child who was born in the year that she died, that is 1957, has lived to see the invention of the transistor, genetic sequencing, access to information become instantaneous, life expectancy, which was 37 years in 1880, increased to 80 years and billions of people around the world lifted from poverty. Those of you who are graduating today will have careers that last for a long time, perhaps 50 years or even more. What innovations will occur and how will the world change? It is hard for us even to foresee that. 
What is possible to foresee, however, is that many of those innovations and many of those changes will come from business. Because the story of the modern world in many ways is the story of advances in technology and trade and communication brought about by private enterprise. It is the fact that those advances have led to dramatic increases in human living standards. That is what makes business a noble enterprise. What is also possible to foresee is that as today's graduates, you will be in position to help shape and guide the changes that do occur. And you will do so at a time when people are questioning whether business can be relied upon, whether the innovations and the changes of the next 50 years will ensure inclusive opportunity, dignity of work, and shared rewards. You will have an obligation as business leaders to help answer these questions affirmatively and to help guide changes in the world responsibly. You will be well prepared. Years ago, Laura Ingalls journeyed to the American frontier. She went in a covered wagon. Most of you came here by airplane, but in a sense, you made a similar journey. You journeyed to a modern frontier of knowledge and discovery. You have taken classes, you have studied together, you have learned from extraordinary faculty and leaders. You have traveled on global study trips, made friends from around the world, heard their stories, and created new ones. In a short time, you will be Stanford graduates, and we will walk out onto the GSB campus in the bright California sun to celebrate. But what you have learned and the relationships you have formed will stay with you. As alumni, do your part to keep the GSB strong. Stay close to your classmates. Return the calls of other alumni. Provide the help to future students that you have received from those that preceded you. As our representatives in the world, I am confident you will be leaders who act with courage, with empathy, and with responsibility. I am excited to see what you accomplish and how your influence will ripple outward in the world. I know you will make everyone here today and all of us at the GSB very proud. Congratulations, class of 2018. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce Carlos Brito. Carlos Brito came to Stanford from Brazil, and he graduated in 1989 with an MBA. He has made extraordinary contributions as a business leader. Brito is known for his business acumen, his clarity of focus, and his vision of building a company that inspires pride in his, in his employees, his customers, and their communities. He has made bold strategic moves to grow AB InBev into the world's largest brewing company and one of the world's top five consumer products companies. The company employs nearly 200,000 people in more than 50 countries. If you've had a Budweiser, a Corona, or a Stella Artois, those are just three of the 500 brands owned by AB InBev. What the numbers do not convey is Brito's ability to bring together people from very different cultures and proud traditions. Just try to imagine bringing new ideas about beer to St. Louis, or to Mexico, or to Belgium, or to Germany, or to Canada, or to Australia. Brito has paired business strategy with a focus on investing in corporate culture and to connecting to customers in their communities. He sets this tone personally and through his company's policies. His commitment to use renewable energy and to support diversity initiatives are salient examples of Brito's vision of a sustainable future. It is my great pleasure to welcome Carlos Brito back to Stanford. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Lynn Levin, 
Dean Emeritus Joss, fellow members of the Stanford Board of Trustees and the GSB Advisory Council, distinguished faculty and administration, thank you for having me here today. It's always a pleasure to be back at the Stanford GSB. I can't believe it's been almost 30 years since I graduated. I remember sitting with my classmates. I remember hearing our commencement speaker. I do not, however, remember a single word that person said. <laughs> so just in case you, any of you follow in my footsteps, I will start with the most important part. Congratulations to the class of 2018. I also want to acknowledge a few very special people in the audience. In 1989, my parents were not able to come from Brazil for my graduation. Well, they are here today alongside my wife, Belinda, and my four kids. So, in special moments like these, there's nothing better than being surrounded by people you love most. I'm sure it's a feeling I share with so many of you right now. So before I really get started, please join me in giving a big round of applause to all the parents, family, and friends of the class of 2018. Now, about 10 years ago, I was giving a talk not unlike this one, only I was dressed very differently. And there were not nearly as many people. Instead, the audience was a group of trainees, global trainees, from our company, AB InBev. I gave my talk. I did some Q&A. I said, well, time for one last question. And that's when this hand shot up. I said, what's your name? She said, Ludmila from Ukraine. OK, Ludmila, what's your question? Brito, what would the world miss if our company did not exist? I was like, holy cow. <laughs> and then I did what you do when you need more time. They said, what's your name again? <laughs> Thinking. Where are you from again? Thinking. Kiev. Well, I've been to Kiev. Beautiful city. <laughs> Thinking. Finally, I said that my colleagues and I would miss our company culture and that our consumers would miss our brands. But later, I came to my top people and said, guys, we need to think more about this one. Class of 2018, you leave this campus prepared to succeed. But you didn't come to a place like Stanford just to be successful. You came here because you want to be exceptional. So as you begin the next chapter, I want to challenge you with a question that probably never came up in class, a version of the question I was asked about a decade ago. And that is, what would the world miss if you did not exist? I don't mean that literally, of course. Every one of you is tremendously, tremendously talented and surrounded by people who care about you. I pose this question in a global context. Why is humanity better off because you are here? No matter what field you enter, tackling this question is going to be one of the most important things you ever do. What I'd like to do is suggest a few ways of approaching the world simple habits I learned at this university and throughout my career that can help you address this question. I'll begin by telling you about how I, I arrived here. I was the only Brazilian accepted to the Stanford GSB in my year. I badly wanted to come. Only one problem, I couldn't afford it. But I knew there was a businessman in Brazil who owned an investment bank and sometimes gave loans to his employees hoping to get MBAs abroad. I was able to meet him. 
I was not one of his employees, but still, I made my case. And this businessman, Georgia, agreed to give me a scholarship for my first year, not from his bank, but from his personal account. I said, Georgia, I won't be able to pay you back anytime soon. He said, no, no, I don't want you to pay me back. I want just three things. One, keep me informed, keep me informed about your classes and your progress. Two, help somebody in the future the way I'm helping you. And three, before you accept any full-time job offer, come talk to me. Fast forward two years, I graduated Stanford with seven or eight job offers like everybody else in my class. They were all on fancy letterhead. My salary, training period, bonus, everything right in front of me. But I had made a promise to talk to Georgia, and he also made me an offer. Except his offer was made over the phone. No paper, no fancy letterhead. And here was the offer. Get ready. Move back to Brazil at a time when nobody wanted to do that, and everybody wanted to be in the US or Europe. Accept the job without knowing the job description and take a pay cut of around 80% compared to my best offer. So that didn't make sense. Except for the fact that at the time when Georgia decided to sponsor my first year, he also invited me to come for a two-week internship where I met his partners and learned about his business, and more importantly, about the culture at his bank. These people were very different than people at other companies where I had worked before. That left me with a deep appreciation for the quality of his partners, their values, and how fast-paced the place was. This was a place I could see myself being not just for two or three years, but for a long time. So I decided to bet on Georgia. I took his offer. My dad almost killed me. And that was before he found out about the 80% pay cut. <laughs> 29 years later, Georgia Paula Lemon is one of the world's most successful business leaders. And I'm still at the same company where I accepted that first offer, just a much bigger company. Graduates, throughout your life, you have the chance to bet on job titles, on salaries, on job offers, on fancy letterhead. Here's my advice. Don't bet on things, bet on people instead. Join people you admire, you respect, people that inspire you, with whom you share the same values, and from whom you can learn. You'll never re regret it. As my former professor here at the GSB, Jim Collins, would say, first who, then what? My second piece of advice also begins with something I learned here at Stanford. See, growing up, I was used to being top of my class. Then I got here, and there were people from all over the world, and guess what? They were all at the top of their classes, too. And I was intimidated to participate in case discussions because I was not a native English speaker, and language was a barrier. But by the second quarter, I learned how to deal with it a little bit better. And by the second year, I started to talk, I started to think, hey, I can do this. Getting through the GSB was not impossible. It was just really hard. I later realized that that place, not impossible, just really hard, turns out to be the best place you can be. Because that place, not impossible, just really hard, takes you out of your comfort zone. Human beings can learn only so many things each day. If you stay too long within your comfort zone, you fall into some sort of routine and your learning curve flattens. If you go 10 years without learning anything, you won't be able to learn 10 times as much in year 11 to compensate. It doesn't work quite like that. A good way to think about this is the high jump. If the bar is never moved higher, there's no reason for anyone to perform at a higher level. As the bar is pushed higher, we have to improve to remain competitive. 
by being challenged, we all learn more about ourselves, about our inner potential, and about what we can realize. We live only once, and it's a waste to go through life without ever realizing one, one's full potential. The way to learn about your potential and put it to work is to remain challenged and stretched. In other words, you cannot let yourself be too comfortable for too long. Push yourself off out of that situation into a not impossible, just really hard situation. Your learning curve will again steepen and you will continue to grow as an individual and professional. My third and final piece of advice is based on something I learned at a conference 20 years ago. This one speaker was a renowned performance psychologist. And he was talking about motivation and what drives people to perform at their highest level. His talk was about your inner voice that allows you to perform at levels that seemed unattainable before. Here's what he said. Imagine you have two tall buildings. Someone puts a plank of wood between them and says, you get a million dollars to cross that plank, but if you fall, you die. Now you'll probably say, okay, only 1% will fall, but what if that 1% is me? Well, not worth it. But what if instead your brother is up there and he's about to fall off that building and you need to cross that plank to save him? You're gonna cross that plank. Your brother's life is a much more powerful reason to perform and walk the plank than the million dollars. In other words, when the motivation was about only you and the potential to make a million dollars, it was not strong enough. When the motivation was elevated, and it now became about your brother and his well-being, that made it all the difference. A higher order motivation is not only about you, but about other people in the world around you. If you want to accomplish something extraordinary, a big dream, you have to choose that higher order of motivation. A motivation that's strong and durable is essential if you hope to perform at your highest level. It will give you the courage to take risks. It will give you the drive to overcome naysayers or doubters. And that's not all. A higher order of motivation will provide you a north star, a reference point, that will get you down the right path and make it easier for you to do the right thing, even when the right thing is hard. So as you enter this new phase, make sure you have a measure, a test, that's bigger than just you. For me, that test has always been the people around me, family, friends, colleagues at work. Listen to this. It's a great gift to have people you care so much about that you don't want to disappoint them. Am I excited to tell them about my work? Will they be proud of my decisions 10 or 20 years from now? That's the kind of motivation that lasts a lifetime. And it's the kind of motivation I hope you'll all seek out. Which brings me back to that auditorium 10 years ago and a question I couldn't quite answer. What would the world miss if our company did not exist? Trying to tackle this question has helped us become a better version of ourselves. We realize we should strive to do more than just sell our products. We should be truly indispensable to our customers, consumers, and to the communities in which we operate. That mission, that dream, informs everything we do today. My point is simply that thinking about this question, asking yourself why humanity is better off because you're here, that will get you motivated to go down the right path, to take the high road, to do the right thing. And when people with your talent and drive find that path, when people like you strive not just to be successful but exceptional, it really does change the world. Every day, GSB alumni are rebuilding new industries from the ground up, bringing new life to iconic companies, restoring our faith in public service, rethinking the way we fight poverty, eradicate disease, 
combat climate change and educate our kids. Today, you join them. And if you bet on people, as the GSB and your parents have bet on you, if you strive to keep your learning curve steep, just as you have, just as you have over the last two years, and constantly seek out that higher motivation, like the long line of graduates carrying on the GSB tradition, then you too will leave your mark on the world. Even if you don't remember a single word your commencement speaker said today. So thank you again for this honor and congratulations to the class of 2018. Thank you. It is now my great honor and pleasure to introduce the GSB PhD class of 2018. Our PhD program is small and exclusive with an admission rate well under 10%. These individuals came here as students, dedicating themselves to two or three years of coursework, followed by an intensive research apprenticeship in their chosen fields. Having become true experts, they leave us as colleagues, setting out on a path to create new knowledge, which we know will help change the world of business and management for the better. Today, we formally celebrate the transition of these individuals from students to future intellectual leaders. After their advisors place the hood of the Stanford Graduate School of Business on them, they will join us on the stage as we welcome them as colleagues into our profession. Diane Lee, the executive director of the PhD program, will now read their names and their dis dissertation advisor will hood them. Dasha Anasava. Dasha studies sources of innovation and the choices established firms, researchers, entrepreneurs, and venture capitalists make when pursuing innovation. Dmitry Arkhangevsky. Dimitri studies causal inference methods. Matthew Stephen Corator. Matthew studies how organizational culture helps drive innovation and high performance in companies. Jennifer Daniels. <laughs> Jennifer studies how individuals perceive social norms in small groups and teams. <laughs> Nick Duchenko. Nick studies econometric methods of causal inference with a particular focus on the use of machine learning methods in economics. <laughs> Kurt Harris Gee. <laughs> Kurt studies how companies communicate financial information to investors. Justin Huang. <laughs> Justin studies economic incentives for content creators in online platforms and marketplaces. <laughs> Arthur Jago.
Arthur studies how organizations use technology to signal values. Jin Yang Jiang. Jin Yang studies the interplay between government policies and international financial markets. Liu Xiaoning. Xiaoning studies patterns of investment and incentives of participants in collective investment settings, such as venture funding. Yi Ming Ma. Yi Ming studies the systemic risk created when banks intermediate loans on behalf of other banks. Charlie McClear. Charlie studies how accounting regulation affects firm decisions. Bobak Moalami. Bobak studies how participants in online marketplaces behave strategically. Jung Nguyen. Jung studies white-collar crime enforcement and finds that the diversion of government resources from traditional criminal investigative priorities toward counterterrorism after the 9-11 terrorist attacks led to a significant increase in white-collar crime in the years ahead of the Great Recession. James Gunwook Paik. James studies how the market competition affects the rate of innovation in the semiconductor industry. <laughs> Carlos Adolfo Sanchez Martinez. <laughs> Carlos studies partisan discrimination in court, and he shows that individuals who file employment lawsuits are discriminated at trial according to their employer's partisanship. Yang Song. Yang studies scale of mutual funds and skill of fund managers and shows a significant mismatch between mutual fund skill and scale. Sarah Stein. Sarah studies culture, language, and hiring. Elise Tuck. Elise studies how employees' performance and evaluations of their performance are influenced by their workplace environment, such as the quality of their peers or managers. Christina Zhu. Christina studies the effect of alternative data, such as satellite images and consumer transaction data, on the stock market and on corporate managers. <laughs> Julian Zlatev. <laughs> Julian studies when and why people decide to volunteer and give money to charity. This is the first class to graduate with the new version of the Certificate in Public Management and Social Innovation. Founded by the late Dean Emeritus R.J. Miller 45 years ago, the certificate program educates leaders who understand societal issues, 
design for and evaluate impact, and understand the specificities of the management of social organizations, both in the private and public sectors. Today's certificate graduates really do embody the spirit of our GSB motto, change lives, change organizations, change the world, and as they like to add, for the better. They participated in a wide range of social innovation courses covering topics such as healthcare innovation, education reform, sustainable energy markets, poverty and inequality, and leadership and diversity. They explored roles with high social impact, such as corporate responsibility, nonprofit board governance, philanthropy, and civic engagement. They operated the GSB's Impact Fund. They traveled to disadvantaged places, both in the United States and abroad, to take a deep dive into entrenched social and environmental issues and see for themselves how social innovators address them. Some of these students have developed their own social enterprises and are ready to launch them right upon graduation. This year, we have 131 recipients of the certificate. Their names are listed in the commencement program. I now ask the students receiving the certificate to stand and be recognized. Congratulations. Good afternoon on this festive and beautiful day. It is my pleasure as director of the Stanford MSX program to present this year's graduates who will receive the degree of Master of Science in Management. The mission of the MSX program is to provide experienced leaders, men and women who have spent at least eight years in professional and management roles, the opportunity to prepare themselves for increasingly senior positions and organizations they will lead. The program is a full-time, year-long course of academic study, giving these students an all too rare chance for reflection and growth in the midst of an already accomplished career. Simultaneously, they bring to the GSB a perspective shaped by experience with difficult organizational challenges, enriching our academic community as a result. While studying at Stanford, these students carry the title of Sloan Fellow, a tradition that dates to the year the program was founded in 1957. This year's 103 fellows came to Stanford from across the United States and 31 additional countries. Many are sponsored by their employers, Others will be joining or creating innovative new enterprises after graduation. Having completed all the academic requirements of the program, this year's graduating fellows will join the worldwide family of Stanford Business School alumni. On behalf of the administration of the program and the faculty who have taught them, join me in wishing each of them great fulfillment and success in the next phase of their careers. Now, among the previous deans of the GSB, one is also a graduate of this program. In fact, he is a graduate of all three GSB programs that offer a degree today. Robert, or Bob Joss, began his Stanford journey as a Sloan Fellow in 1965. He then graduated from the MBA program in 1967 and the PhD program in 1970. Like our graduates, he had an accomplished career in business and government then returned to the GSB as dean in 1999 for an impressive decade of institution building, literally institution building, as this included the planning and construction of the Knight Management Center. In honor of Dean Joss's service and dedication, the top 10% of the MSX class ranked by academic performance are designated as Robert Joss Scholars. As we read the names of the graduates, we will also announce if they have achieved the distinction of Robert Joss Scholar. It's my pleasure now to read our graduates' names while Dean Levin presents the diplomas. Michael Ahn. <laughs> Daiki Amaki.
Christina Arbalayas. Renatu Baba. Mohammed Ramzi Babji. Jose Betignani. Lindsay Morgan Boucheryl. Kirsten Nelson Johnson Byron. Matias Caro. Edward Joseph Carroll. Clement Joss. Andre Casanchi Neto. Ching Hao Chan, Robert Joss Scholar. Mickey Rachel Shetrit. Andrew Lee Chang. John Hill Collins. Sarah Catherine Craig. Matthew Crouchy, Robert Jaw Scholar. Alvaro Delso. Luca Di Moro. Garth Edwards. Ben Elbaz. David Foulon. Guo Jing Hua. Ricardo Gutierrez, Robert Joss Scholar. <laughs> Xing Myung Hang. <laughs> Shua Hao, Robert Joss Scholar. <laughs> Stephen James Haymore. <laughs> Daniel Herman. Ahmed Abdel Hamid Hanesh. Andy Hokehaus. Aditi Joshi. Golbi Gamarai. Edward Kargbo Okoroji. Tar Purohor Kartane. <laughs> David Rokosa Kingbo. <laughs> Amit Kumar. <laughs> Valentin Kudnisov. Soon on Guilford Law, Robert Jaw Scholar. Andrew Lloyd Lewis, Jr. Don Sian Lim. Richard Chohemi Lonsdorf. Robin Lancelot. Lumsden. Jason Ma. Yi Yi Ma. Guillerme Magalyais.
Islam Mohammed Saeed Mahdi. Yusuke Ed Matsuda. Bruno Menezes. Ravindra Mistri. Deepak Mittal, Robert Jaw Scholar. Murilo Machado Mora. Nand Mulchundani. Masakuni Nagaoka. Sheetal Narayani. Anna Nevarova. Killian O'Connor. Jaunty Mark B. Anson, Olive Cooper. Rahul Palange. Aaron Pan. Jehong Park. Diego Jose Benafiel Grandea. Roberto Perez. Ariano Pichinin. Dave Prakash. Satyadeep Prasanna. Puneet Puri. Fan Chien. Ganesh Ramakrishnan. Nayan Ramani. Numratha Rastogi. John Bishop Ravenall, Robert Jaw Scholar. Jalil Regis. Francisco Reynoso. Annie Riley. Alessandro Rinaldi. Nicoletta Rule. Medavi Sahai. Smita Surin Jen. Ajay Sarohi. Parul Sharma. Sohe Shinomiya. Patrizia Soriano. Amit Sridharan, Robert Jaw Scholar. Andy Tan, Robert Jaw Scholar. Juan F. Triola Sample, Robert Jaw Scholar. Kai Ung. Pablo Jose Valenzuela Bascunan. Aaron Van Boer. Mike Van Wyk. Theodora Van Eck. David Marcus Vols. 
Mandeep Singh Warak. Sunny M. Webb. Erica Masako Welch. Ryan O'Melveny Wilson. Nir Yahav. Nobohiko Yamamoto. Yi Yang. Angel Zakowski. Inchi Zhao. Veronica Zhao. Among the Robert L. Joss scholars, one student's academic achievements places them at the top of the MSX class. This student is awarded the George G.C. Parker Prize, named in honor of GSB faculty and former program director George Parker. The graduate receives a certificate, a cash award, and their name will be on a plaque displayed at the GSB. The recipient of the 2018 Georgie C. Parker Prize is Sunan Guilford Law. Distinguished guests, faculty members, staff, families, and friends, the MBA students gathered before us today have engaged in a transformational experience. They have acquired solid foundation in general management and have pursued deeper study in their areas of interest. They have engaged in personal growth and built relationships that will last a lifetime. They have helped the school and the community in many ways. They are an impressive group and are ready and worthy to join the ranks of our illustrious alumni. Therefore, it is my great honor and privilege to present to you the Stanford MBA Class of 2018. As you leave, I hope your memories of the GSB will remain fresh and that you will stay involved with the school. Our alumni played an important role in your academic experience, ranging from serving as judges in the executive challenge to acting as mentors in entrepreneurial courses. 
It is my wish that you too will engage with the GSB's academic mission as alumni and give your time and experience generously to future classes. Your class has already demonstrated its desire to stay connected to the GSB and to support the school in a meaningful way through your participation in the class gift campaign. You will leave your own legacy and play a part in bringing the GSB experience to future generations as other alumni have done before you. At this time, I would like to ask the members of the Student Association Senate and the members of the SA committees to stand. These are, these are the elected leaders of the student body. The SA has a profound impact on the academic, extracurricular, and social lives of students and serves as an important conduit between students, faculty, and staff. Serving on the SA is a tremendous amount of work and is the foundation for much of the students' experience. Please join me in another round of applause for this committed group of student leaders. Now I will ask the Arbacher Leadership Fellows to stand. The Arbacher Leadership Fellows Program plays an integral role in the GSB leadership curriculum by bringing together second year students to support the leadership development of the first year class. On behalf of the school, I thank these 70 students for their tireless work and dedication. Please join me in another round of applause. I would now like to ask the student leaders of study trips, global seminars, and the Stanford Tsinghua Exchange Program to stand. These 92 outstanding student leaders partnered with the school on a critical component of the GSB education, the global experience requirement. They served as peer educators for more than 600 students, traveling to 24 countries, helping them discover how business skills are relevant in a wide variety of industries, institutions, and contexts. For acting as ambassadors of the GSB and for their indelible impact on the students they led, we thank them. Please join me in another round of applause. In the next few minutes, we will begin reading the names of the graduates in alphabetical order, and we will invite them forward to receive their diploma. Names will be read by Margaret Hayes, Assistant Dean of the MBA program, and by Kirsten Moss, Assistant Dean of MBA Admissions and Financial Aid. Graduates will receive their diplomas from Dean Levin. All of you here have undoubtedly heard of R.J. Miller. R.J. served in the U.S. Air Force during the Second World War and was later once one of the so-called whiz kids who revolutionized the Ford Motor Company. R.J. became president of Ford and then later the much admired fourth dean of the GSB from 1968 to 1978. His sterling leadership of the school is legendary, and he remained involved with the school until his, his passing at the age of 101 last November. In honor of Dean Miller's service, the top 10% of the class 
ranked by academic performance, are designated as R.J. Miller Scholars. As we read the names of the graduates, we will also announce if they have achieved the distinction of R.J. Miller Scholars. In the case of John Degree students who are walking today but not graduating, we will identify those who are currently in the top 10% of their class. Margaret and Kirsten, would you please begin? Laura Abeya. Lawrence Jeffrey Abraham. Eddie Ackerman. Rebecca Winter Ackerman. Tolulade Adeafa. Ruth Adu Daco. Matthew Allen Ailey. Anamesh Agrawal, RJ Miller Scholar. Aluwashegun Ajayi. Daniel Akle Karanza. Sarah Albana. Adam Alcock. <laughs> Stefan Alacock. <laughs> Shubomi Aluko. <laughs> Catherine Alvarez Torado. <laughs> Akara Ambach. Isha Mukesh Ambani. <laughs> Dhruv Amin. <laughs> Yen An. <laughs> Ian Field Anderson. <laughs> Kaylin Charles Angert. Marissa Rachel Ash. <laughs> Baeza Asvat. <laughs> Juka Avellino. <laughs> Alex Avery. <laughs> Jeremy David Cooperman Avens, RJ Miller Scholar. Noel A.U. Antonio Baeza. Jessica Kathleen Olivier Bayer. Nicole Bayon Landa. Chuck Barrett, R.J. Miller Scholar. Catherine Barrows. Artyom Barsakov. Bazar Bazarin. Louis Baudouin. Anne Gardner Baum. Tobin Binion. Vasundara Bargava. Lauren Elizabeth Blake, R.J. Miller Scholar. Jordan Andrew Blaschick. Stephen Philip Blunk, R.J. Miller Scholar. Natalie Boddington. 
Aaron Deal Booth. Jason Bornstein. Blanca Bolet Bunsel. Charles Syme Bradford. Ashley Jane Brazier. Alex Justin Bratman, RJ Miller Scholar. Tatiana Brazina. David Marquette Brooks. Jeremy A. Brown. Luke Carroll Brown. Jana Marion Bubbly. Jesse Buckingham. Jonathan M. Bullock. Brian Larson Butler. Thomas Callahan. Ryan Calvert. Thomas A. Campbell. Evan Cantor. Mark Bryant Cassidy. Hansei Catlett. Celine Chalou. Trisha Chandy Romani. Patrick Abbott Chase. Laura Cho. Stella Bingqing Chen. Jalu Chen, RJ Miller Scholar. Shabda Uma Chigurupati. Juan Choi. Fernanda Chauza. Natalie Ashcroft Clark. Scott Cleveland. Rowie Cohen. Marion Cohn. Henry Cole. Kate Comey. Jan Contreras Ortiz. Deanna Corona. Danny Cotter. Stephen James Crawford. Albert Gianri Sui. Stephen Simmerman. Madeline Dangerfield Cha. Shalva Dashvili. Vivan T. Davis. Isadora Freitas Leita Kimarua. Jose Luis de la Pena Elizondo. David Andrew Demris. Khalid Derbas. Fatima Dico. Tam Den, RJ Miller Scholar. 
Natalie Nyak Do. Varshith Dondapati. Matt Doty. Katie Michelle Dove. Annalisa Dragic, RJ Miller Scholar. Brian Thomas Dudley. Caroline Reed Duffy. Jason Dunford. Lauren Dunford. Isha Idupuganti. Yasmin L. Bailey. Kyle Engelman, RJ Miller Scholar. Savannah Jean English. Matthew Allen Entoven. Bigam Erdogan. Paulo Emerio de Moraes Macedo. Laura Rose Fayer. Jake Fellner. JC Fisher. Claire Louise Fisher. David Fisher. Marshall Fisher. Payman Boruha. Andrew Philip Fowler. Michael Fu. Arnaldo Gabaldon. Nicholas Gajero. Billy Gallagher. Diego Galvez de Urtebe. Nat Gardenswartz. Flora Gautier. Maria Gavriluk. Robert Stewart George. Joseph Gobriel, RJ Miller Scholar. Lucas Giannini Mendoza Abreu. Dana Mark Gingrich. John Goba. John Geddert, RJ Miller Scholar. Becca Goldstein. Alberto Gozzi. Jill Greenberg. Margaret Jasper Greenberg. Joshua Ryan Tumbaga Griffin. Christina Guo. Himanshu Gupta. Rish Gupta, R.J. Miller Scholar. Sadna Gupta. Jihad Hazuji.
Wen Han. Tyler Hanish. Adam Gordon Hanno. Polly Haraka. Jeff Howe. Anna Ho. Catherine Elizabeth Susan Hayes. George John Jordan Thomas Aquinas Hayward. Connor Edwin Hurd. Robert J. Helbling. William Douglas Morris Helfond. Charles Henriksen. Ray Hernandez. Sarah, Sarah Ann Hinkfist, R.J. Miller Scholar. Michael Joseph Deans Hobbs. Supriya Hobbs, R.J. Miller Scholar. Uni Ho. Ryan Scott Hollander. Megan Holston Alexander. Jessica Holton. Hannah Hansel. Zachary Horat. Dana Xiao Xiao Ho. Ryan Nicholas Houston, RJ Miller Scholar. Jiha Huang. Benjamin Hughes, RJ Miller Scholar. Lauren Humphrey. Charles Huey. Juan Ietzi. Scott Michael Ings. Samuel Alexander Berg Jackson. Kaita Johnson. Benjamin Jones. Candace Page Jones. Matthew Jones. Matthew Kahalari. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew Kahalari. Magdalena Kala, RJ Miller Scholar. Jennifer Victoria Kamara. Michael Jason Katzer. Hector Keat, R.J. Miller Scholar. Jordy Keelan. Carolyn Marie Kelly. Devin Michael Kelsey. 
Amanda Carol Kent. Malika Candlewall. Mark David Conan. Yaya Koja. James Kim, RJ Miller Scholar. Sitara Kodala. Kodali. Shuren Kral. Malti Kramer. Matthew James Kremer. Sunny Kumar. Christina Lamarca. Eric Xavier Lakin. Nathan Lamb. Olivia Hope Lang. Naomi Yoshinari Laporte. Justin Larkin. Cristobal Alcalde Leal. Benjamin Patrick Lee. Edward Lee. Nicholas Dunn Lepla. Jeffrey Allen Levere. Anthony De Barros Ling. <laughs> Carrie Littman. Sharon Lowenstein. Thomas Loftus. Benji Loney. Liz Lewis. Jeff Lyon. David Ma. Shalia M.D. Ma. Eming Ma, R.J. Miller Scholar. Maria Alexandra Cristina Rufino Maceda. Jamie McFarlane. Serbi Maheshwari. Arthur Martins Costa Malcolm. George Malkin. Timmy Malkoon. 
Natasha Malpani. Hunain Manvia, RJ Miller Scholar. Carlos Marinetti. Nicolas Marino. Danielle Jacqueline Marshak, RJ Miller Scholar. Andrew Martin. Christina Martinez. Lauren Arley Martinez. Jack Marzuli, RJ Miller Scholar. Kelsey Mason. Carlotta Matthew. Caroline Matthews. Ryan James McGuigan. Vincent Paul McPhillip. Jen McPhillips. Mihir Mehta. Nimit Mehta. MD Mete. Michael James Melody. Alexander Menke. Sophia Mestre Ariola. Robbie Michnik, RJ Miller Scholar. Brian Awa Mokoro. JB Manu. Andrew Moore. Ted Murphy. Sushmetha Nanuru. Cameron Knapps. Nicholas Naranjo. Rafael Simeon Nataf. Mike Narat. Somia Netami. Aaron Newman. Robert Hardy Newell, RJ Miller Scholar. Michelle Nguyen. Tim Nichols. Andrew Knoll. Agnes Tindamanira Omega. Diego Ontaneda Benavides. Itamar Or Orthruger. Olivia Papa. John Levitt Paradise. Joshua McKinstry Parish. Jenny Haman Park. Sola Park. Akalish Patipati. Jamie Patrick. Theo Michael Patsalos Fox. Robin Perani. Carolina Perez. 
Marcelina Perez. Daniel Petz. Deanna Danielle Ping. Annabelle Pluque. Barbora Pozimkova. Marcin Pogroshevsky. Caitlin Rebecca Pomeroy. Stu Poslins, RJ Miller Scholar. John Powell, RJ Miller Scholar. Rushal Prakash. Shami Caduce. Sarah Rahman. Nicholas Ryan Racinus. Taylor Ray. Megan Elizabeth Raymond. Lee Morris Reed III. Toby Wrights, RJ Miller Scholar. Chase Elliott Richard. Max Richards. Edonimo Reefko. Gloria Riso Elias. Jordan Scott Rittenauer. Habib Rizkala. Annie Robertson, RJ Miller Scholar. Manuel Romero. Bruno Rusa, Rosa. Adam Rosenthal, RJ Miller Scholar. Benjamin Rao. Martin Rudigier. Josephine Ruiz Healy. Leo Ryu. Justin Sackety. Anthony Salomon. Kate Summerdick. Neha Samdaria. Aaron L. Samuels. Robert Sofer Samuels. Anna Martin Schleusner. Ali Schmidt. Patrick William Schmidt. Chelsea Schott. Eric Nathaniel Schreiber. Christopher Schwartz. Tomer Schwartz. Joseph Tanner Scott. Steph Scott. Stephanie Morgan Scott. Druva Shah. Puneet Nitin Shah, RJ Miller Scholar. Ruchir Shah.
Sejal Nandakumar Shah. Brittany Shaw. Archit Sheth Shaw. Angela Shi. Audrey Shi. Jacob Schiff. Surrender Singh. Karen Sinha. Nicholas Sintanon. Sohail Caesar. Michael Austin Snyder. Nicholas A. Soraka. Kelly Elizabeth Souls. Andrew Sparks. Michael Barrett Speaker. Maxwell Spear. Ignacio Spiniak. Peter Spradling. Naveen Srivatsa. Aaron Stommer. Annie Stancliffe. Jessica Steffens. Brianna Stein. Risa Danielle Lair Stein. Danai Sterenthal. Stephanie Rose Stillman. Matthew R. Strauss, R.J. Miller Scholar. Andrew Collins Stutz. Carol Suh. Peter Sullivan. Emily Sunderland, R.J. Miller Scholar. Shrishti Sundaram. Lauren Renee Swartz. Misa Takada. Naoki Takeda. Jessica Talbert. Yen Tan. Rio Tateshi. Iman Taylor Lindsay. Matthew Tesserfreud. Apolinar Toba Villarel. Dan Tan Tram. Derek Soy. John Randall Tyson. Zachary Ula. Carlos Manuel Upege Icharia. Sofia Valencia Torres. Camille Van Horn. Nina Vasan. Anika Mary Verghese. 
William Anthony Vernon, R.J. Miller Scholar. Jennifer Villa, top 10% of current class. Whit Virgin Downey. Divya Vishwana. Vo Singh Ling. Manuel Venke. Anthony Wagacha. Samantha Pak Ting Wei. Rachel Wallach Van Portheim. Francis Wehrwein. Rebecca Boyd Weidler. Ali Wiener. Catherine Benner Weinman. Evelyn Denhart Weiss. Megan Welch. Reed Westwood. Haley White. Forrest Wilkinson, R.J. Miller Scholar. Tom Whitashek. Dan Wu. Do Wu. Jennifer Shaw. Michael Yakima. Michael M. Yang, RJ Miller Scholar. Matthew Yoder. Joe Yuan. Marcelo Zambrano. Orlando Rafael Zambrano. Catherine Jane Zeeland. Peng Zhang. Joy Zhang. Tong. Jong. <laughs> Sophia Jung. <laughs> Cecilia Jo. <Joe>. Cindy Zhu. <laughs> Yulin Zhu. <laughs> e Zhuang. Helen Zo. Nominated and chosen by their peers, the recipient of the Ernest C. Arbuckle Award is the second year MBA student who, by their active participation, initiative, leadership, and personal integrity, is judged as having contributed the most 
to the fulfillment of the goals of the Stanford Graduate School of Business in their actions, both within the school and in society. We are delighted to have Susan Arbuckle, the daughter of Ernie Arbuckle, with us today to deliver the award. The recipient receives a cash prize and also has their name on a plaque on display at the GSB. This year's recipient of the award is Celine Shaloub. Alexander A. Robicek Student Achievement Award in Finance was established to honor Professor Robicek's outstanding contribution to the teaching of finance at the Stanford Graduate School of Business from 1960 until his death in 1978. The award is given to an MBA student selected by the finance faculty for outstanding achievement in their finance courses. The recipient receives the award and also has their name on a plaque on display at the GSB. This year's recipient of the award is Robbie Michnik. Among the R.J. Miller scholars, one student's academic achievement places them at the top of the class. This student is designated as the Henry Ford II scholar and receives, along with the Miller Scholar scroll, a cash award and their name on a plaque displayed at the GSB. This year, recipient of the award is Jack Marzulli. Honored guests, faculty, staff, families, and friends, we have reached the conclusion of our ceremony. I invite you to join us for receptions at the Knight Management Center. Graduates, please stand.
what a journey it has been. Congratulations, graduates. You are now alumni, or will be tomorrow morning, alumni <laughs> of the Stanford Graduate School of Business.